We are Brightside theater nerds welcome to the bright side home theater podcast the home theater podcast it's all about the experiences the sights the sounds the scenes areas how you doing <laughs> good 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 i was gonna change it i just thought should i go the scenes but I, just to just to change it up but i figured nope it consistency is good I felt the hesitation. I felt that little bit of hesitation yeah. in you. I was like, what are we going to get? It's going to be something exciting. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. No, and it wasn't. <laughs> Sorry about that. I can only apologize. No. Oh, uh, literally, how are you doing, Steve? The, usually, you know, we sometimes we get, not usually anymore, but sometimes we get a chance to chat ahead of time. Literally did not. Set up, took my knit hat off, so now I can hear you better. <laughs> how, how's your week been? Yeah, good. Yeah, it's been okay. Very pleasant Easter weekend. Ate far yeah. too much chocolate, obviously. Um, but uh, and and I've still got a mountain of Easter eggs left. Um, you know, so uh, that'll have to be tackled at some point. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's good. Plenty of time in my theatre this week. Seen some great stuff and some not so great stuff. Uh -oh. uh, but I, think I know. But I have to say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and in case everyone gets. It, expectation levels high i haven't managed to watch true lies <laughs> oh yeah so and alien still hasn't arrived although it is over the atlantic as we speak so uh next week, aliens we'll over the atlantic well you didn't like you to heard say, it at first folks <laughs> <laughs> um so next week will be the cameron arama um this oh. week is uh we've not got quite to that yet this is a ridley scott arama this week yeah. i think <laughs> but um uh, but yeah no it's been very good how's your week been I, I did see you with a lethal looking what, yeah. nail gun. I'll, yeah, I'll play that <laughs> later. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I'll talk about that later too. Um, busy, just a busy, busy week. Um, haven't literally haven't watched anything else, but I've got. I think it's a really really cool update. I got a really cool upgrade. Um, first upgrade to the new house, and it's super I, i'm so excited to tell you guys about it it is home theater related and everything it's like it's something i've always wanted and uh really really excited to talk about it um i'm gonna save that one for the end uh i've, I've told a few people about it uh i actually told uh next tuesday is gonna be uh brett bjorkris will be on today rich keith did you get to hear any of that it's a quick not hour. a single second yet no oh, okay. i haven't I, I will do i you know what i'd forgotten so I need yeah. to I need to watch. That. <laughs> it's been a been a very very busy week, Dee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I'm glad you reminded me because I will listen to that on my way into work in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, Rich and I had fun. Um, it's uh, it's a quick hour. He has you know he's a very busy guy. I got a couple kids at home, and he's with his job the way he works. It's like I was like, hey, thanks for getting squeezing me in. Uh, I wanted, I and it's funny, I. I had texted him probably a week or two before that, but they had gone him and, and I say it in the show, I think him and, and Ryan had gone crazy about Roadhouse months ago. And I meant to text them right then, like, let's do a show, the three of us, because they are not happy about it. They weren't happy mm. about it when it was announced never mind seeing it right so i was like let's just have fun and i so i did text them like two weeks before and i was like let's do it no you know gloves are off you guys can take shots at me we'll just have fun with it and like i'm gonna bright side them and we hadn't at the time we hadn't seen it yet mm. and uh and then of course you gotta go listen to them on dork and hashtag dork podcast and they just they, they, like ryan is so mad about it it's so funny <laughs> it's so funny and I, i'm dying to get him on but rich rich it wasn't a big fan either so we had we had fun with it but we we talk home theater and stuff like that but but next week brett and i are on and i already recorded that one i had a, a rainy day so i he jumped on for me it was awesome and i actually had told him about what i'm going to tell you guys about later and uh super super exciting so uh, I don't have any in theater, although I have been in my theater almost every day. 
watching the Marvel Netflix series. I'm on Jessica Jones right now. Mm. I actually started, um, I started the Defenders. I did the first episode, mm. and I was like, you know what? I feel like I should go back and uh, let's not blast through this. And I did the first two up, obviously, of Daredevil, but. I'm in, I probably got like four episodes of Jessica Jones left and I'll go through Luke Cage and, uh, and I am going to go through Iron Fist to, to, as much. Cause you know what? It really, it's, it really makes me look forward to getting up in the morning and hmm. be like, you know, as busy a day as you have, I get up at five 30 or my alarm will go off at five 30 and I, I get up somewhere between there and six, depending on how I feel. And I'll go downstairs and I'll watch a single episode, but then the rest of the day, I'm looking forward to the next episode that early hmm. in the morning. So, um, I don't want to blast through them and then have, don't have something to look forward to. So I'm just gonna, hmm. I'm gonna ride it out as long as I can. And, uh, so. Well, the, the the reason you might really want to see Iron Fist is apparently there has been a suggestion this week that um, what's the name of the guy that that plays Iron Fist? Has it been? Yeah, something, um, something, something. Yes, he he is a. If I want to say Finn Russell, but that's some that's a rugby no. player. Um, it's uh, but he is um he he tweeted or or put something up on Instagram this week suggesting he might be in uh, Daredevil: Born Again. He actually may yeah. have been rehired, as it were. So, yeah, so watching Iron Fist might actually be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, well, it, so. and, I mean, it's not like you can't forget. And season two of Iron Fist was actually really good. And um, not really good. I shouldn't say that. It was definitely, Iron Fist is definitely the weakest. Finn Jones uh, Finn is Jones, definitely right. the, um, I'd say it just came to me, but I was scrolling through IMDb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Copycat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's definitely the weakest of all the series, right? And I, I just, th the first season was really a disappointment because everything I felt up until then was just really, really strong. But now going through it a second time, maybe maybe I'll enjoy it more because you know the story. And then mm -hmm. the ending of season two was just so good. It was just like, it left, it literally left you hanging and you were like, Oh man. And then, <laughs> but yeah, but Jessica Jones is really good. I, no doubt. I mean, you, you can see why she got that character and, uh, Kristen Ritter, why, why she got three seasons out of it. She, her and, uh, it, well, yeah, Jessica Jones and daredevil were the only ones that did three seasons. Everybody um, else just did two. So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, really enjoying it, but, and it is a lot of fun, um, um, in the theater and the upgrades and i almost cheated one night i was jonesing for jessica jones um <laughs> because over the weekend i got real real busy and i didn't even get time to watch anything for like i think friday saturday and sunday and um so i was like one night i was like oh i'll just watch an episode up here no you can't do that so i didn't <laughs> um but yeah yeah jordan in the chat saying yeah iron fist was the weakest too so hmm. um but yes, but yeah, Steve, you said, as I jumped in here, you said the chat was going crazy today. Yeah, man. Well, I, I joined at about 10 like two, and it was just Mikey and Mike, Mike Schramm and Mike, Mark V and, uh, and Steve at were all going great guns a turn tuned in. And I thought, if I missed the first hour, <laughs> because these guys had been chatting backwards and forwards. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so what we'll say hi to So Mark V was first, according to this, although Van Gogh reckons he was earlier, but the, the earliest I can see here is Mark V. Yeah. So we'll credit that to Mark V. Um, so Steve Batts in, Mike Schramm's in. Um, we have got, um, scrolling on down, see, they went for ages. Um, yeah. Van Gogh, um, Jordan Copter, as we've said, is in. Uh, hey, guys. Um, we've got Rach in. Hi, Rach. Paul Hurt's in um dom's in of course uh with dom's a, a, an absolute regular now um so we always expect him here um yeah. and we've got uh johnny speakers in pk is in hey pk nice to see you um or yeah. Is, yeah see your name um mark galliano new i think he might Mar be it um, might be yeah, yeah it doesn't sound yeah, yeah well it, mark yeah Gallian. hi mark nice nice, uh, nice hi, to join us mark. jack saying uh jack. have a great show yeah, yeah, I saw so he was uh, in a flat for a flying visit. I saw that scroll by a second mm, ago. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah, very flying. Um, Jazz and is in. Fred, I just saw that yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, you yeah. haven't missed the alien chat yet, uh, Jazz. We'll get nope. to that a bit later. 
and uh, Fred's in as well. Yeah, man, the, uh, wow. the world is here. Jazz. Yeah, I saw you and Jazz talking about Alien on Twitter today when I had a second. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, um, yeah. yeah, talking about Alien and uh, the other one. <laughs> the... <laughs> Yeah. Um, which we'll get yeah, to. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Van Gogh DJ needs to be like Michael Keaton in multiplicity. Don't make a copy <laughs> of a copy. My favorite yeah. my favorite line in that entire movie, she touched my pippy. <laughs> so I've only seen that once, I think. I've it's the all it takes. I seem to remember it being <laughs> just, good. It was, yeah. the, the copy of a copy was just awesome. <laughs> it's just so, <laughs> like <laughs> so great. And, then, uh, uh, and Paul Hurt saying, can't not say, hey, Fred. <laughs> hey, nice. Hey, Fred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Fred to oh. everybody. Thank you. Oh, Ariel's in. Hi, Ariel. How you doing, buddy? Oh, mm. just turn, turn it down. Yeah. yeah. Ariel's dropping in. Yeah, it's wow. nice. A lively bunch. Lively bunch, which yes, is good. Very. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep us going because we're both <laughs> feeling it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very much so. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, with that, um, hey, oh, we had a great uh uh patreon chat last week mm. too had a really good one quick <laughs> quick two hours i had to get out uh you tried <laughs> to jump in you were you were, you were on call and got called <laughs> i did i did i did yeah, yeah i was at the police yeah. station and uh you know no matter how much i might try clients aren't keen to sit and listen to a podcast or uh yeah. join in a show and i'm not sure you want some of my clients in there put anyway. them on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stop stabbing and start talking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a we had a great chat. We had a great mm. chat. Paul was in there. Dom was in there. Don. Uh, I'm trying to think of. Sorry if I forget anybody else. But yeah, we had a good time. We're getting close to like I hosted here on Streamyard, and I can only host ten. And I think that one we got close like seven or eight there was mm. a time I, th I think i was like oh if a couple more people pop in but yeah it's good we we talk everything so thanks guys uh hopefully we'll do it again real soon uh especially with the update that i've got coming up um so oh yeah brock star me damn it i always forget him <laughs> uh, i i wish i could say uh, john i wish i could say i did that on purpose but i didn't buddy <laughs> i didn't it's my mind is mush <laughs> always <laughs> forgotten never always mm. not but you've never forgotten uh it's funny so all right uh he's crying <laughs> <laughs> all right uh you want to get to a home theater experience uh oh actually yes anybody if you want to take part in the patreon chats uh you can go to brightsidehometheater.com uh, look for the links to join patreon or go to patreon.com slash brightside home theater it's only a dollar a month that's all you need and then gets you in the door yes there is a fee to get in the door for those or that is just flat out supporting the show so um <laughs> thank you and you can also go to brightsidehometheater.com and um Buy us a box of popcorn. And uh, choices are yours. They're there on the website. You'll see them. I'll come up with graphics for this someday, right, Steve? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's fine. No rush. <laughs> In my spare time. In my spare yeah. time. All that, all that uh, time. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, thanks for everybody that's supporting us, whether it's monetarily or spreading the word. Uh, whether you buy t shirts and show everybody or you at T Public or, you know, just yelling down the street hey brightside home theater you know if you get if you get a black eye send me a picture i'll i'll, I'll post it on the show <laughs> yes we'll uh we'll, we'll put up wanted posters <laughs> yeah <laughs> have you seen exactly. this man <laughs> have you seen this man yeah yeah so all right let's get to uh i'm gonna say let's get this one out of the way but maybe i'm wrong am i wrong mm. in that mm. <laughs> what the hell was that noise that's that's a that's a <laughs> yes. that wasn't a, that wasn't a sounder everybody but i should make that a sounder <laughs> what the hell was that <laughs> that's a <All> non-committal right. <laughs> <laughs> i can't even imitate that that was awful <laughs> it's so good. all right <laughs> i guess let's do this one. Oh yeah Okay, so this is Aquaman. Not part two, by the looks of it, just Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Yes. Um, on 4K UHD uh, Dolby Atmos. Um, 
Now, I know you've seen this, Deej. I don't have to ask you if you've seen it. I know you saw it. You you saw it in the theaters, and you've seen your Kaleidoscape version as well, haven't you? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Now, I did not see this in theaters. Um, I didn't think because so. I was not about to do that. <laughs> um, and so I, because I have a, 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 a little bit of an issue with the first one, I saw it in the theaters, hated it. And I'm, and I mean, hated it when I saw the first one in the theaters um, and stayed away from it for a long time um, until someone that I know really wanted to see it. And so I was like, well, look, if you're going to see it, I want you to see it properly. So I then yeah. bought the disc of the first one and watched it in cinema, George. And in spite of myself, I did enjoy it more the second time, quite a bit more, but I haven't been back to it. <laughs> so obviously only a little bit more, but it, it was okay. So so anyway, so I, I was not about to see this in theaters and I bought the disc when it came out and it's only been out here a couple of weeks or so um, and threw it on. So this for me, Deej, <laughs> is one of those movies where it's all about the home theater experience. It is absolutely yeah. not about the movie itself um no because having watched this movie um the film is is i mean it, i mean how <laughs> Let's to use that term it. loosely <laughs> yeah yeah the uh, film that gives I mean, it, it too much credit <laughs> well it, it does feel like it's been assembled from bits it's yes. just been kind of like, let's just have this bit and yes. we'll just chuck that bit in and let's all just throw it in together and we'll use yep. a bit of sticky tape and, and we'll put it all together. And then if that runs into sort of a film, that'll be fine because it's a weird mishmash of stuff. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, the, the most entertaining part of this film for me was watching all of the bits where you could see poor Amber Heard had just clearly just been excised from this movie in just about yeah. every single way. And I felt, felt, you know, very, very poor, you know, very, very sad for her because, you know, it's a bit rubbish. I mean, she clearly was in this a lot and she's not anymore. <laughs> yeah. So you can see where they've cut round her. And I think you can also see the scenes where the scenes where she is, um, she, where clearly there was the conversation and dialogue between the two of them. And it looks to me like they brought Tamira Morrison in and gone, right, let's just shoot this again. And instead of you saying me, just say her. And so they've just sort of reshot all these relationship scenes, all these sequences that I think would have been between Arthur and, and Mira. And instead of now between, you know, I'm not sure what yeah. Tamira Morrison's character's name is. Um, and, and, Dad. and, uh, and Jason Momoa. Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Papa. <laughs> yeah. And can, it's can, just, can I, uh, go on, yeah. Can I interject for a second? Yeah, of course. You pay way too much attention to an Aquaman movie. <laughs> well, no, I know. But that it's but like, as I said to you, Deej, haven't I said to you before, if you're paying attention to this stuff, you're not focusing on the movie. Like on the movie. The drama's yeah. not working. Yeah. So yeah. if I'm well, thinking of that, yeah. it's because there's not a lot else going on. <laughs> no, no. It, so there wasn't. You know, and all the way through, I was just thinking, oh, she clearly had dialogue there and it's just silent. And she was clearly yeah. was going to talk there, silent. And so you can, it, it, and it's so clear. They haven't even tried to hide it, I don't think. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, so the story is all over the place. And, and I, I mean, just for the love, just for the life of me, I could not understand, you know, why you start this stuff. And, and also the other giveaway is whenever you can see, you know, a film has had a troubled production history when there are multiple scenes, the scenes again, of characters walking or flying or moving left to right in the distance and there's voiceover nothing yeah. says we're trying to fix the holes in this and we're trying to put something together that makes no sense then loads and loads of scenes of people walking in the distance and voiceover because right. it's like we haven't got those things we didn't shoot and we had to just stick this together and there's yeah. loads of them in this absolutely loads and i think you might have said before there's adr in this as well it's blatant oh. where you know where there are characters clearly talking and what's coming out of their mouths is not yeah. what they were saying um, no. so there's lots of that as well so it's nonsensical it's rubbish as a story <laughs> however <laughs> having said that boy does it look and sound good <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, I, I had heard, I read a review that said this was shot in 8K. 
Now, I'm not sure if that's necessarily correct. It was a perhaps not a not necessarily a prestigious reviewer, but that's what it, it mentioned. And so this is a 4K native. Well, it's not native 4K, then, is it? But it's a yeah. derivative of the 8K down to a 4K master. And I think it shows. And there is certainly some footage in this, that, um, particularly a fight on the beach. Um, well, I yeah. said a beach, yeah, which looks incredible to the point where you can, you know, you can reach into the screen. I mean, it looks like what it is, which is IMAX footage, and it yeah. looks stunningly good. And that kind of stuff, and there's lots of that throughout the movie. It's very colorful. There is, I mean, there's a lot of various locales and and different. I mean, they've thrown all kinds of crap at the screen, <laughs> and it and it's good looking crap. <laughs> yeah. Oh um, yeah. Like you know, I mean, so look at the colors. Just even mm, in the oh, yeah. in the um the the graphic we have up, it's just it, it was just so vibrant. It was you know mm. um I don't the best scenes from the Flash. It felt like mm. this was like that entire thing, like mm. v visually. Right, um, mm -hmm. the Flash had it in not in flashes, but it, it had some really, really good scenes that were like super vibrant. But then there were other times in the movie where it kind of, you know, you know, leveled out a little bit. But this here, because it's so CGI heavy, um, mm -hmm. that jungle scene, oh, yeah, when they're running, and that's not a lot of CGI. I don't imagine. I mean, maybe they filmed it in a jungle or something. But it's like the vibrancy of that is just insane and yeah. then the little oh, yeah, yeah. you know and the creatures that are around them were those are obviously cgi but i mean I, I just i thought it looked for a movie that's so heavily cgi i think john and i said this um it didn't it, it didn't look bad it looked really good like it, mm. and that's why i think they shot it so vibrant to help mix and then they get to play with more colors when they're doing the cgi yeah yeah, I mean, it, there's no questioning, you know, the 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 the, the video of this, in, in my view. I mean, I think it to a certain extent, it's a, to its detriment, and not always to, in terms of the CGI. I mean, Black Manta's kind of upgraded costume looks yeah. kind of ridiculous. The way yes. I described it to a friend of mine is it looks like um, in The Running Man, Jesse Ventura has to mm. suit up as one of the, the gladiators, whatever you want to call them, the run, you know, and, yeah. and he's got this kind of metal arm thing and it looks kind of silly and it's supposed to look silly. And that's what Black Manta's costume that's been upgraded looks like. Yeah. It, it just looks fake and silly and kind of, you know, like it's just made out of, um, you know, out of uh, tin foil not made out of kind of metal and that's the 4k just kind of showing it for what it is um yeah so video wise you know it looks fantastic i mean there's no i can't i can't really criticize how it looks um and it sounds great as well there's some really nice kind of you know beefy sound effects and, and yeah. action scenes and all the rest of it so it this to me is a pure home theater experience Everything else, the story is just crazy, ludicrous, yeah. silly. Um, again, I also found myself wondering about what, where all the henchmen have come from, because you've yeah. got and they've all got these perfectly fitting uniforms. And I was thinking, well, how exactly did who did who designed those? Who yeah, fitted exactly. them for it? And, and what's the pension plan like? And how much are they getting paid? And like, and again, if you're thinking about that sort of stuff, you're not concentrating on the narrative because it's not working. Um, right. So yeah, so so it looks great, sounds great, and for that, I suppose I'd recommend the disc. Uh, but I well, think you've yeah. got to go in with very low expectations, story wise. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It, mm. I mean, <clears throat> everything you're saying is true. Um, I found the story to be fun and funny because mm. of the way it was. It's like you knew going into this, it was the last one of the mm. DC EU. Never mind. Yeah of Aquaman or anything else. It's like, they're just like, we can do anything we want because we're not getting another one. We're not trying to get, I mean, this is like a lame duck president. <laughs> it's like, I can do what I want and you can't, I'm, <laughs> I'm done anyway. So basic, that's what they, and they just had fun with it. And uh -huh. at, at the end of it, there was some scenes at the end that I'm like, are they gonna go there? Are they gonna do some, like, it, I thought they would, but they didn't. But mm -hmm. um, Mark V saying in the chat, he's like, "Yep, it was still a fun movie, really goofy but fun." And uh, mm -hmm. and then and Steve Atts like, uh, "I need to rewatch." Oh, Steve Att was in the Patreon chat too. Steve Att was in. Oh the yeah, yeah. Sorry, Steve. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Steve says, "I need to rewatch it. I sat through it, but the story didn't stick with me." 
Um, it'll never stick with you, Steve. <laughs> like, <laughs> the story is not going to stick with you. Um, but it's entertaining. Um, yeah. But in the home theater side of it, oh, my God. It's, I can definitely see myself revisiting this every maybe year, two years, just because it's just so much fun. Mm. Yeah, I mean, all so yeah, so place, Fred yes. says, yeah, it's an all over place type movie, and and I, and I think it, it, and I, I think it shows. Yeah, I think it has been. <laughs> it has. It's a Frankenstein movie without a monster. Everything's just been assembled from bits. Yeah, and I think I'm sure that when this was shot, there was a coherent narrative, and you know, it's all fine. But I think what's happened ah. since is, for whatever reason. Yeah. And we don't know, and we and we're not going to speculate. Certainly not on air. Is that that you know for whatever reason it's been chopped and cut and edited and messed around with, and and for whatever reason, and that I think in some films you can kind of get away with that, um, yeah. but I think in this film it is very apparent from the from the opening monologue. It's clear yeah. that this has been there's there are lots of different directions that this was being pulled in. Um, and I've read loads of behind the scenes stuff about it and, you know, storylines that, that they shot and didn't carry on with. And and it was a lot nastier at times as well. I mean, oh, you know, really? there were there were things. Oh, things yeah. were done in this that are hinted at in the final one, but they didn't do it in. You know, they shot it, but they decided to step away from it in terms okay. of Arthur's son and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah. That was that were shot. But they just thought, no, do you know what? No, let's not go there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I I'm glad I've seen it. It's staying in the collection. It's not gonna, it's not midwaying. It is gonna stay in there. <laughs> it's not midwaying. Um, yeah. I think that's a verb, isn't it? <laughs> I guess. It, it is now. Um, and so uh, so it's it's gonna midwaying. stay in the collection. I may yeah, midway. I may well give it another go at some point because I did, you know, enjoy how it looked and sounded. Yeah. But you've got to, this is one that it's not so much leave your brain at the door as you know take your brain out and liquefy it quite literally in the case of Aquaman <laughs> and then, you know, try and put it back together at some point in the near future. Cause there's just nothing <laughs> really to, to, to sort of get into with it. But as I said, home theater, and that's what we're here for. It says it right on the shirt. Yeah. Um, is great. It's, the you know, it's a Warner's yeah. disc. It's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, in that respect, you know, there is no argument, but everything <laughs> else. <laughs> less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly it's a, i mean i it's like i have fun with it and like i said i'll revisit mm. it when i get a chance and John did or, too. yeah john yeah. johnson we yeah. both saw it in the theater um mm. and it was it was okay i mean like i said it's nothing i'm not gonna be like oh my god it's awesome it, it, it was mm. it was very uh choppy convoluted is what everybody mm. said chopped up kind of confusing but that's what they were doing you know so Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, in, fan, in fairness, Jordan, I think said earlier as well. Uh, if I can find it, um, yeah. So he does say so. He liked it. He said, "Say what you will about it, but at least it got released and didn't become the latest yeah. week of WB's tax write-offs." So, and that, in fairness, is certainly right. I mean, they did release yeah. it, and at one point, I think, bearing in mind all the other stuff that was going on, I suppose at some point, somebody at Warner Brothers thought. Mm, could we, you know, could we maybe get away with this? But, you know, they did release it. We got to see it. So, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. What did it end up making? It's like, oh, I gosh. Mean, it, 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 I, I think it, it actually didn't it 400, bomb? 500 million. It did. It, oh, I think, really? But of course, I think it made quite a bit of money, but the production budget was very high because they were reshooting for what, two yeah. years? They made Something like three like movies. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, yeah. So I think they were shooting and shooting and shooting. So it was, it was, it, uh, I think it cost them a lot. But it, last I read, it was about 400, 500 million, something like that. Um, but if you spent 300 million on it, then, you know, you're not making your money yeah. back. Um, so, yeah. But, but there yeah. it is. People still I mean, like it's, it's, uh, comic book movies. That's the thing. Yeah. So. I mean, it is a shame, though, that because I'm one of these people that, that I actually think the DCEU had some really solid movies. Some of them were really good, and I think yeah. that it's a shame that it that it ended on a whimper, not a bang. You know, it's a shame that it kind of went out this way, um, because I think it was the the universe was better than that. And as I said, some of the movies I thought were really really good. What would be your favorite of the DC? Bear in mind we're now waving goodbye to the DCEU, Dig. What would be your favorite one of them all? Just curious. Oh, by far, this? not even close. Snyder cut. Yeah, the Snyder cut. Yeah, I okay, just yeah, I love yeah. what. I love what he did. I love the, I mean, I even liked the original before we got the Snyder cut, mm, but then mm -hmm. getting oh, right, the okay. Snyder cut and getting the behind the scenes stuff, but close second 
would be uh, Man of Steel, mm-hmm. uh, then Batman v Superman, the Snyder version, um, yeah. and then uh, then I think uh, Wonder Woman, the first Wonder Woman. Mm. I would say one of uh, one of my all time like absolute favorite scenes of of the entire DCEU is when Wonder Woman drops in in Batman v Superman. Remember it's like to, mm-hmm. remember at the end and that music mm-hmm. that absolutely that that is it gives me chills every time I see it. Mm-hmm. It's a demo scene when I, I when I saw that in the theater, I couldn't wait to replay that. And even just thinking about it right now, it's like later I'm I'm like I got to go in and grab that one. I'm like that <laughs> scene when she drops in and they're like I, I thought she was with you. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's a great, great scene between the three of them. But yeah, just, just the drama and what they did there with with that character and introducing her because at that point she hadn't she'd just been Diana up until then, mm. right? And then when mm-hmm. she drops in, I mean, it's one of the greatest introductions. And then um even in Wonder Woman when she does that minefield that's a yeah that's, that's, yeah, that's, no that's a demo land. scene yeah. right mm-hmm. and then uh well i think Wonder that was the first 84 was yeah, that's what that's where it all started going downhill to me mm-hmm. even like i enjoyed them all but they all were just it just dropped off from there yeah i think wonder woman that that scene but wonder woman the, the first one was the first post calibration 4k movie that i watched in cinema George. oh really because oh, wow. i just had it like that day or a couple of days before and yeah it was just like wow bearing in mind we'd seen it pre-calibration and then post-calibration just this stuff was incredible yeah it was great yeah very very wow. good um oh here we go uh just you're pulling it up i saw it too yeah yeah so 434 million on a 205 million budget so yeah, so an eventual profit maybe, but not you know not the kind of money that they wanted. Bearing in mind, the original was what one point two billion. So you know this is a big yeah. drop off for a much bigger budget. So yeah, no wonder they thought it was bad. <laughs> Dom didn't um, like the Snyder cut. Uh, yeah, loved all of Snyder. Hmm. Yeah, he did not care for the Snyder cut. Uh, oh wow! Yeah. Hmm. I mean, no, like, some people you know, didn't. Some people really didn't. They um, what I, see what I like about stuff like that, and especially like I, I said it on the show before about um, listening to him um, talking with Rogan, and I think the Snyder Cut is like, for all intents and purposes, pre Snyder Cut, everybody was like, you know, the fans like, we want his vision, we want his version, and then his whole personal life behind the scenes that ha- that led to all of this. Not that if any of that hadn't happened, we would have got the Snyder Cut originally because I don't want to meander on about this, but what I love (laughs) about it is it shows the difference between corporate Hollywood and art, the artist in Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like Mm -hmm. Snyder has a vision, love him or hate him or love the vision or hate the vision, they have a vision, but then... the corporate side is like well we got to do this and we want to market it and we want to do that and it's like it it really is difficult and it's fun i really appreciate people like zach snyder that that fights against that and it's like i don't care this is what i want to make right and it's Mm -hmm. like you know it's imagine if somebody like if bright side home theater got bought out and they started telling us what we had to do and you'd be like i don't know I, i would never ever ever I couldn't do that. It's mm. like because it, I couldn't. One of my fa- my not my favorite things. One of the things I was afraid of, and John and I talked about this in high school. It was like, what do you want to do as an artist when you when you graduate from college? And I'm like, I don't know. It's like everybody, you know, because I don't want to be told what I got to do. And that's why I lean towards. I was actually going to be a teacher, so I could mm. teach, and then. And you got the supplies from the school. So you didn't have, you know, <laughs> I could do my own thing, but I, mm-hmm. you know, but I, I'm not bright enough to get the teacher side of it. So, but it's so hard as an artist and I, I see what my brother does and I see what other artists do. And it's just, it's so hard to do that stuff and be told what to do when you have a vision in your head. And it's uh, mm-hmm. like Lucas goes through it. Cameron goes through it. Snyder goes through it. Um, those are the ones we know publicly. So, um, Night, Rachel. 
Uh, yeah, not right. <laughs> Putting her to sleep. Sorry. Sweet dreams. <laughs> yeah, sweet <Yeah>. dreams. <laughs> All um, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I agree yeah. with your 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 uh, assessment of the you know things. I I think the Snyder Cut is fantastic of Justice League, and I think the first the the non the Joss Whedon version was not not for me. I I was pretty you know unhappy with that. Um, Dom says is, gives us something similar in the chat. Um, good night. Whereas I think yeah, the Snyder Cut is is, night, is a work of art. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said good night to Rach. Not to us, I don't think. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I didn't know if he was going to everyone. Too. It's <laughs> yeah. it's even later to him now. It's an hour I think ahead. He's an hour yeah. ahead of you, yeah. Yeah, he is, he is. Um, so I I think the, the Snyder cut's awesome, you know, and just totally 180s the movie, and it gives it this visual aesthetic with the the four mm. three, you know, the IMAX ratio, as it were, that that um that makes it all the more interesting because of it. Um, yeah, and fixes so many of the problems with the other one. So I, yeah, I think the Snyder cuts. I think that's right. Yeah. And again, I would agree. Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, the director's cut or Ultimate Edition, yeah. whatever you want to call it, um, and then Wonder Woman. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with those. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, it's um, it, it is a but, shame that it ended the way it did, but still, we got some great stuff. Oh yeah, but even and and, 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 okay, <laughs> yeah, and, and even even. Joss Whedon's version it's not I don't put the blame on him it's like mm, his he, he, you know what I mean his hands were mm. tied it's like he had to come in last minute and like and then what leg does he have to stand on to tell the studio the vision he wanted to make or whatever or maybe that was mm. and but it's like how do you deal with that it's like it and I think it's a great example or for us to look back at and go when we don't necessarily get the movie that we think we wanted or whatever, there's reasons for it. It's like, you can't always just look at the director and go, wow, he screwed that one up. You don't know what kind of parameters yeah. he was under, you know, or her. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, Whedon came in halfway through and was given a load of footage and told, make a movie out of that. Yeah. You know, and, and then I, I think it was even later than stars. halfway. It was like yeah, yeah, yeah. three quarters of the way because of yeah. everything that went on. And you so. think someone comes in and goes, right, you know, here's your release date, one. Here's your assembled footage, two. Oh, by the way, you can't have your main actor for the last bit. You're going to, because yeah. he, he doesn't look like that anymore. He's got a beard now and he's not allowed to shave it. So good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like, what oh, am yeah. I supposed Ruined to do? The mustache. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it must. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. The, the poor. Remember so -so. that? I was like, yeah. And they oh. did. Oh, man. They did get a shot of it. Remember, that was one of the opening scenes. Remember the shot with the mustache and they talking to the kid and they put Buzz it in Lightyear. video camera mode. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they put it in video camera mode just so that it would look wonky for a reason, but you could, oh my God, it looked awful. Yeah, it was not All good. All right. <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, go up on the roof. Take care. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, I think I, yeah, I think I told you last week. Did I tell you last week I had a leak? It was all shingled. Yeah, it was all shingled. Yeah, it yep. was shingled, but I had a leak coming in from oh. the, uh, from, you know, we we got plenty of rain, so it was good to see the test. So I had to get up there and put some flashing tape on it. But, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so I took some pictures while I was up there, and it's it's actually not that bad. It's like this is the farmer's porch right here, so you can see, I don't know if you can see this on the, uh, on the stream, but this, my ladder's right there. It's like a 12-foot, you know, drop. But that's a nice, easy pitch. <laughs> and then the yeah. roof is only an eight pitch, which isn't bad. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, so I got up there, did some uh, repairs, took some pictures, and that's what it looked like. So this is, like, all of this here, this zip tape, they didn't do. So basically what was happening is the, the roofers, they put this on and the flashing here, the silver stuff you see, it was just basically flapped out and exposed waiting for siding mm. i'm actually going to stone this but all the water would just run down here and go right inside the house go well actually it would go oh. under the flashing <clears throat> excuse me and then leak down the shingles and then uh, under the shingles on the plywood oh. that's yeah. that's on the roof and then at the plywood seams that's where the water would pour in and it was mm. happening on all four sides so yeah, mm -hmm. so I got up there, did this, fixed it all up. It literally got a huge storm the next day. Perfect. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> not a leak. So yeah, very, man. very happy. Uh, another thing, you know, another thing I don't have to stress over anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's, perfect pitch. Yeah. <laughs> not my singing ability. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's no damage like water damage. So, uh, yeah, you don't want to leave something like that for uh, to uh, no. to carry on, that's for sure. <laughs> no, absolutely not. That's not good. All right. Which which of your next would you like to do, Steve? Um, I'm I'm easy like a Sunday morning. I always say it's uh, it's dealer's choice stage. Go on, you take your pick. Take your pick. You we've go. got to do those two in order if we're going to. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we'll get these two. Sounds and good. And there is mention in the chat of the next one, so I think you know makes sense. Uh, oh really? Oh, oh okay. yeah. Look, 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 look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. Okay. Mm. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so um, this is, and it's not evident from the uh, from the picture nope. because this is another one of those movies where the, you don't get the title of the film on the menu screen, which is a bit weird. Um, and this is Prometheus, um, yeah. which I dug out of my collection this week to rewatch because a, obviously Aliens should be coming this week on 4K Blu-ray. So I dug out Prometheus to watch it again. Now, DJ, I know I'm, well, I'm 99% sure you've seen it. Oh, yeah. I saw oh, it in good. the theater. Okay, well, I've cool. seen it at home. Mm. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, I really too. like it. So, yeah, I, I I do as a film. So I I do like the film. I think it, it, I don't think it helped itself by calling itself an alien prequel. Um, I think had it just come out as a sci-fi movie from Ridley Scott, and just kind of let the story play out. I imagine this would have done um, really, really well. I think where it suffered in the theaters and still kind of suffers to a certain extent these to this day is by them calling it an alien prequel. And you then get all your alien fans who butt up against it and say, well, it doesn't match. And then everyone gets upset. Um, but I, I, so I really like it as a movie um, and I don't mind it as an alien prequel, um, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, I enjoy the film. I think it's good. Uh, and it was a lot of fun to watch it again. Like I said, I've seen it in the theater. I think I've seen it twice at home. Um, I think I saw the Blu-ray and then the 4k one came out. Yeah. Um, and it, and it still holds up. It's still great fun. And I, you know, absolutely recommend the movie to anyone hey, that Francis. hasn't seen it, although I'm sure they have. Yeah. Hey, Francis. Hey, East London. Good man. Right. Hi, yeah. Francis. Uh, East London, all right. Um, anyway, that's Jeez. probably not how you sound, Francis. And forgive me if I'm, uh, you know, doing an inappropriate accent. <laughs> Don't think I am. So, um, yeah. So Prometheus is really good, and I and I'm glad I revisited it now. But what I'm even more glad about is not just how much fun I I had watching the film. Is this disc is fantastic, Deej. Yeah. Really, really good. And I had forgotten, and I've seen my 4K version. Previously, this is not my first time with the disc. I've had the disc since it came out. And I had forgotten just how good this looks. Um, this is in the kind of Fox Golden time where they were releasing movies like The Revenant, like this, which just were polished and and gorgeous looking discs. And of course, when you marry that quality with Ridley Scott's direction and production design and all the rest of it, you end up with something like this. I think video wise, this is pretty close to reference, if not actually reference. It's gorgeous. And I didn't spot any problems with, with, you know, with, with black levels, with any kind of, you know, macro noise or any picture def deficiencies well, at all. It looked fantastic and it looks great from the opening shots right through to the end and you've got all the star fields and you've got all this stuff. It really does look amazing. Um, and I mean, these pictures, I mean, as I'm seeing them here are quite pixelated, but, but, you know, if you see them, how I took them and I did put them yeah, up on Twitter. Look, yeah. yeah. Really, really good. And actually quite a nice indication as to how good the disc looks. Um, it looks fantastic. Um, so looks great. Now the sound is not in Atmos. This is in DTS no. HD 7.1 which Fox did quite a bit back in the day. Revenant's the same. So again, DTS HD 7.1 master audio. But of course, it's up next to Neuralex anyway. Um, yeah. And it sounds great. You know, you get the the sandstorm that you just sort of see a little glimpse of in that picture that was up a minute ago. Um, you know, you get the, the 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 very cool little drones, the pups as he calls them, um, as Sean Harris calls them. You know, all moving around the, uh, the, the 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 spacecraft, and they sound great, and they go right into the distance, and they come right past you, and and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
so I think it's great. Um, and, you know, the, the ickiness of the cesarean sequence and all that kind of stuff has never sounded more <laughs> gruesome than, oh. uh, than than in this. So it's it, it really is good. Now, and I get the criticisms. I get that people, you know, bump up against the fact that it's an alien prequel. And as I say, the seams don't quite match, even with Covenant, which I watched again. Now, I think I saw that on 4K to talk about the week that we didn't do the show, DJ. I think I might have skipped it. But I did see it recently before I realized Aliens was coming. Um, so I won't be watching that again. I don't need to. I've only just seen it. Um, but so I get that people bump up against it. I get that some people really don't like it, which is fine. But I think it's really good. And I think you do yourself a disservice if you don't at least check out the 4K disc because it looks and sounds fantastic. Um, but yeah, so what, what's your view on it, DJ? What do you think in terms of the movie and how it looks and sounds and from what you could recall? <laughs> yeah same thing it's like i, I mm. haven't seen it in i i know i have the disc i don't have it on kaleidoscape um i can't remember the last time i watched it this covenant i haven't really revisited a lot but i do remember like joe and i see these in the th my son joe and i see these in mm. the theater when they come out because we're just like we just mm. love the sci-fi and the al yeah. the whole yeah. alien thing. We actually liked like that part of it. It's like I remember what seeing it after seeing it in the theater and hearing people complain about it and stuff. And we were both like, "What the?" It's like you know, like uh, we don't get it. It's like, I, it, but like you said, the alien fans come out with their expectations, and it's just too, you know, too stringent or whatever. But the home theater side of this thing it is it's i i it's like i'm looking at it right now on kaleidoscape i'm like oh, i should get it and i'm like <laughs> and, and you know it's so funny it, speaking of which yeah. did you see kaleidoscape just came out with their 96 90 terabyte odd. yeah massive yeah massive i'm like oh my <laughs> is it 96 or 97 i don't know what it was it's insane yeah. and i was just like perfect just what i need more movies and i don't have time to watch them <laughs> never mind afford the night i don't i didn't even, i don't know what they cost or anything yet um mm. it's funny i talked to todd this morning and i saw him tweeting about it but we were talking this morning before it, before it dropped and uh so i haven't talked to him since i don't know if he found out about pricing yet but um i know the 88 terabyte one which has just been replaced was i think that was like 24 or twenty five thousand so the 96 97 is going to be like probably right around there um dollars or pesos it doesn't matter <laughs> well pesos you know could funny? be quite a bit cheaper <laughs> do you, you you know it's really funny and, and um yeah. they have a package it's um it's like the ultimate kaleidoscape package i think they call it or something and it's you buy two two 97 or whatever it is terabyte uh terabyte drives and it comes with every movie in the kaleidoscape collection and i don't even know what that i just saw i'm like i you can't i'm like that that's awesome if you can afford that i'm like why not and i know there are people that can it's like i've worked at some high-end car dealerships and you see these cars go out the door consistently and you're like I can't afford, I could never afford one of those cars in my life. I'm talking 200, $250,000 cars, right? And they, they sell them weekly. Just boom, there goes another one. There goes another one. There's so much money out there. Not in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. Well, to be fair, DJ, all your money's in your house. <laughs> quite literally, quite literally. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, second mortgage case gate bundle. Yes, Steve. Yep, Steve and Matt in the chat. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, yeah. So Paul Hurd says about Prometheus, it gets a bit better on rewatch. Expectations yeah. lower a bit each time until I'm okay yeah. with it. I, yeah. see, I think it's better than that. I think that's a little. It's entertaining, bit and yeah. the home theater side of it is really good. Yeah, it's really yeah. Good. And you've got uh, Dom says, I hated hated the scene with the scientists petting the space cobra. Yeah, I get that. And those guys are supposed to be smart. It, yeah, I, I get that. And it is a bit odd, but it's still, but but I think the stupidity of that, and let's face it, most horror films, characters don't really behave as you would in real life. Because in real life, you're going the other way. You're running for the hills. Or in real life, in the middle of space, and you hear a, a, a strange transmission, you don't go, do you know what? Let's go see what that's all about. Right. <laughs> you tend to avoid that in real life. So 
on the understanding that stupid stuff happens and because that's part of the drama it's the only way the story is moved forward that seems actually quite a difficult scene to watch when the you know the arm yeah. break and then the thing is like uh, ugh, ugh. yeah yeah and it's a compound yeah. fracture too so you see yes. the bone uh. and there's anyone who's ever broken a bone and i broke my leg playing rugby it was under my less than glittering rugby career um anyone knows that sound that cracking noise yeah and it <laughs> gives me the willies every time yeah so um so yeah i i so if you forgive the stupidity of how it starts how that scene unfolds is just gruesome um so yeah we've got to uh I, I i still think this film is better than a lot of people give it credit for but you know whatever else we say about it it's a good home theater experience so um yeah well uh well worth uh well worth seeing i say actually dom also says um yeah it, uh, mark v uh, say yes mark v great disc as well alien covenant it is a good disc um yes. I, I, as i said i think i saw it the week we then didn't do the show so i didn't get yeah. to talk about it completely did, agree yeah. yeah fantastic looking sounding you know, really good disc. And I like that film as well for how, even though it's silly again, it's still got some great stuff in that. Um, and I agree, Dom, one of the reasons Prometheus and everything is back on the radar isn't just because of the aliens disc alien Romulus is coming, I think in August yep. um, with from Fede Alvarez, uh, which should be awesome because there's a man who can do gore and just gonzo bug nuts horror. So it really could be great. So I'm looking forward to that as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. You want to great. roll into your. Yeah. Right, go for yep. mm -hmm. Speaking of alien. One. Yeah. That's it right here. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. So this again, guys, apologies, ladies and gents for this is alien. Not that you can tell from that picture because again, it's full motion video menus and no picture, no picture. So I had to go online. I couldn't find a landscape <laughs> poster That's picture. Okay. So I literally had to just snag this oh. one. Um, and it's an image I hadn't seen before, actually. So I thought, oh, looks a yeah, bit it's different. Cool. Um, yeah, it's unusual, isn't it? Um, so this is then Alien, the 1979 classic that no one is about to suggest anything other than is a classic um, yeah. on 4K UHD and in DTS HD 5.1 master audio. Again, up next to Neuralex, again, as we always say. Um, have, you, have you seen this, Deej? <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I did a whole show <laughs> on it. Yeah, I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Everyone who's anyone in movies has seen Alien, even if you're not a horror fan, even if you're not a science fiction fan, everyone i'm sure has seen alien um yeah. and and so the movie is great i've seen it more times than i can count i've seen it on you know vhs i've seen it on dvd i've had the blu-rays and obviously now the 4k disc and this is the 2003 director's cut um which even though it doesn't really make sense with what comes later on um it's still nevertheless a really really good um edition of the movie um film's great love this movie oh. it's very very well done loads of different ways you can read it the subtext is all over the place as well um which is really interesting but also it's just a great taut haunted house in space movie that plays like gangbusters it's never boring never dull never kind of take your eyes off the screen it's great and 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 it's still everybody's good um and this is my the reason i watched it not just because of romulus as i said this week it's over the Atlantic. Um, my copy of Aliens is on its way. Um, that's obviously the 4K disc. And so next week, as I said earlier, a camera and a rama, um, because True Lies arrived yesterday. Um, so I'll be watching both of these this week. Um, looking forward to next week. So I thought I'd watch this. Um, Video-wise, fantastic. It's a very, very good remaster. And actually, Deej, this is one that I don't think for once I've heard many complaints about. Because we're really no. used to these remaster an old film and then loads of people go, mm. you know, that one shot at two hours and one minute for half a second is slightly out of focus. I can't remember seeing any complaints about this, this or reading any complaints. But it wasn't Cameron. No, Cameron well, no, comes but, with that yeah. reputation. So people were complaining about, you know, they were actually complaining about Titanic, mm. Aliens, True Lies, and The Abyss before we got them <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like so it, when you when you already come in all based off of terminator 2 because mm -hmm. other than that it's like what else did we really get and 
So their expectations were already set. And then now they just want to be proven right. Right. Look at, mm. see, I told you. I'm like, <laughs> Here we go. Well, yeah. So I think that's a lot of it. This one came out and it it is gorgeous. I just, mm. I remember the textures. I remember the detail, the depth and detail in the, in the black level. And just, oh my God, it was so good. But it had yeah. no, nobody had any preconceived of, ah, it's ruined. <laughs> well, yeah, but, it, and yet, you know, the, 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 you know, the grain aficionados, the, you know, both for and against, neither of them seemed to be moaning about it. No one kind of was, nope. was, was kicking off and going crazy. Um, and, and for good reason, because I think it, it, it's really, really nice, very organic looking movie. And it does look like film, but not obtrusively so. It doesn't karate kid it at any point. You know, you never kind of, oh, God, I've got to just get used to this. It just looks fantastic throughout. Um, and so that's great. And then the audio is fantastic as well. I particularly like the the sequence with um, uh, the cat, Jonesy, the cat, and the, mm. um, I can't think of the name, but Harry Dean Stanton's character. I can, shouldn't know his name. I've seen it enough times. Um, but that whole sequence in the um, in the landing, uh, the landing gear uh area where you've got the water coming down from above all the water yep. and the chains clinking above you and all of that just beautifully mixes uh, into the overheads and it really does feel like you're in this huge cavernous area um and anyone not knowing by the way that is supposed to be the landing gear that's what that is those are the feet that come down when they land um that is what those are i learned that in the dvd commentary all those years ago um <laughs> so those are supposed to be the feet that come out that's what those things are that are hagging um and so uh yeah i think all that sequence is great um all of the kind of the 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 opening sort of unusual sort of noises in space sound great as well um it's an awesome disc and uh and absolutely cannot uh cannot recommend this enough and it's just nicely set me up ready for the awesomeness that is the alien special edition as soon as it lands <laughs> as soon as possible yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah so even cannot wait when you put this image in in our in our folder it's like this helmet and i remember seeing and that's what i remember mm -hmm. talking about in the show and the podcast is that the detail and all of that in the it just who puts that amount of like i, I think i might have said like hieroglyphics or whatever mm -hmm. in a space helmet right like all of that mm -hmm. detail that d decorative detail going around that helmet it looks Oh my God, everything. There was so much stuff to see in this that honestly, when this came out on 4K, it's like, it, it's funny because I've obviously I've done a lot of A being over the last four or five years um, with 4K coming out and, and for the show. And it's like almost like 90, 99% of the time, you'll see something that you've never seen before. And then you go back to the Blu ray or go back to the DVD and Oh, there it is. It's there. It's just not as clear and pronounced. So when you do get the 4K, you're like, oh, wow. It's just so clear. You just see so much more. Mm. I, I mean, it's it, and what's what's staggering to me, and we've talked about it before and recently as well, is that the, the, the foresight from the production designers, the directors, the, the cinematographer, because this only gets lit, the DP, this only gets lit mm. – in, in a certain way. So in 1979, these guys are thinking, look, we, we need to make this look good because whilst you aren't going to see this now, somewhere down the line, you actually might be able to see this stuff. This might resolve to a point where you could tell it. Cameron did the same thing with Titanic. You know, you could read the Royal Dalton um, details on the, on the China, you know, in mid shots, and you could see it in 4K. You could forget it on Blu-ray or anything less than that. So the, the foresight in these in these filmmakers' minds to think maybe someday you'll see this is quite quite an achievement, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, because you should be yeah. able to see sellotape. You should be able to see, you know, little little yeah. the joins, and yet you can't. You know, and, and all this other detail just looks incredible. Very yeah. very cool. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Very very pleased with this. I think it's great. And again, just nicely set me up ready for the big one. Uh, which is aliens? By the way, DJ, choice between the two: alien and aliens. Favorite between those two? Aliens. I like aliens. Okay. Yeah. I like okay. Aliens yeah. Better. Is it close, um, or is it yes. not? Yes. Oh, even close. very close. 
very close mm. um mm. alien aliens alien even aliens three i remember seeing that in the theater with a buddy of mine um and i wasn't at the time i wasn't big into the aliens world uh he introduced me to that because these mm. came out and they were, they were all rated r when they came out and i wasn't yeah. allowed to see them but then when three was coming and we had talked about i was working i was i think i was like 18 or 19 when three came out maybe even i don't know what year did three come out do you remember 1992 i want to say was it 92 so i was 20 91, 92 wow. yeah, let me yeah. so years years ahead of that it, me and my buddy were talking and i was like all right i'll check these out so i bought the vhs watched them at home and i loved them and then mm. obviously getting ready for aliens three but uh but yeah i think it, aliens to me is the more yeah, this it, alien was you know obviously it's to me it's kind of like star wars and empire hmm. but i just don't have i didn't see alien first in the theater and wasn't it didn't set me up like like star wars did so that's why i think i kind of like aliens better it's you know it's just, it felt like a more actiony movie to me than than alien which is a great sci-fi movie but yeah so, see i'm i'm i it depends on the day of the week and kind of how what kind of mood i'm in i'm so yeah. close to between the two because i love aliens because i love the action and i love the the gung-ho mm. space marines all the hardware is just that's what cool. i mean yeah, typical Cameron, you know. But then you've got the the, the tense horror atmosphere of yes. Alien, and so depending on what mood I'm in, will depend on which one I prefer. It's a bit like T T one and T two. Same with that as well. One day yes. I might say the first Terminator because oh my god, there's some great stuff in that. And but then another day it's oh no T two because yeah. again, look at the action, look at the scale of that, you know. Yeah. And, and actually, very similar movies in terms of a a, a, they're, a slightly they're lower identical. Setup. Mm, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. pretty much identical the storyline <laughs> yeah. everything it's like mm. even the action sequences it just feels like in t2 cameron got to do everything like he had the technology to do more of what he wanted to do in in 84 with with terminator mm. so i feel like in that that's a great comparison t t terminator mm. to t2 and then alien to aliens so it's i mean i think alien is probably the better movie movie because it's more story driven mm. than action driven but i just i love the action of aliens mm. you know on the dialogue the whole setup of aliens because of course you've not just got one you've got loads of them now yeah. and you know again the, the 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 and again actually i think who was it that just said uh yeah van Gogh says alien is sci-fi horror aliens is more action with frat boys and yeah. yet i like that you know, the, yeah. you know, it's game over, man. You know, all this stuff. And yeah. You know, oh, great. Another bug hunt, you know, and all this kind of stuff. I mean, this dialogue is fantastic. And, and what's if you his think name about it, it's in... Vietnam and space. It's just oh. great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but what's his name from, um, he's in every Cameron movie, right? Uh, oh, I forget his name. Not Bill you Paxton? Know, he... Yes. He mm. is brutal in Aliens. <laughs> when was the last time you saw Aliens? Oh, not within the last 18 months or so. I've oh, seen okay. it loads of times. Yeah, I, I know have too. Backwards, I mean. <laughs> but when we got the new 4K, I was just like watching him and his, just his whiny voice. And this is like, just yeah. like oh, he's just, great. Oh my God, yeah. he's absolutely brutal. And it's like, but then <laughs> get him in uh, True Lies. Same, yeah, yeah. same guy, <laughs> same whiny guy. <laughs> I should have called him Hicks. over the dam. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, man. Oh, yeah. man. oh my god uh, he's brutal it's awesome it's awesome <laughs> and then uh so dom in the chat says alien and aliens are like peanut butter and jelly milk and cookies i love both ham and eggs yeah <laughs> yeah that's it yeah but if you had to choose <laughs> and i yeah. as i said i think that's a that's like trying to choose between your kids you know it's it's just yeah. it's just like dig you know it's yeah. impossible um sophie's yeah, choice very very good <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> oh here we go so again so uh Paul says same, can't separate them. Alien, perfect creature horror, aliens, military action, roller coaster. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. And I can't wait. I, honestly, as soon as Aliens lands, I've got a pile of movies, two feet tall here of things to see. But when Aliens lands, that is first, and then it's True Lies, because I just cannot wait. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Ooh, so, talking to right. which, what's all this? Look at this. 
So I thought you, you'd appreciate it. I was actually going to send this to you, and I'm like, oh, what the hell? Let's save it for the show because I don't have a lot of home <laughs> theater stuff to it. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's, let's bring it to the stage. Everybody look close. What do you see right there? Go Raging Fire. Can you see those, Steve? Yeah, yeah. I read them? Them. So Raging, Raging Fire, Fire, Red Dawn, Ready Player One, Roadhouse, uh, Robin Hood, Robocop, Rocky, yeah. Heavyweight Roadhouse. Collection. Oh, yeah. Okay. Remember last oh, week? Oh, you did have it. You did have <laughs> it. <laughs> so, and that's because I mentioned go. it on the show. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, you did. I was like, if, did you see it? Like, is, there is a 4K. Oh, yeah. And I was like, holy crap, I think I have it. <laughs> <laughs> We've all so, done it. We've all done yeah. it. Less so oh. with a digital device that you can check these things on. Yes. But we yes. have all done it. <laughs> yeah. So, and you know that's worth 60 bucks so i think get that straight on amazon or ebay yeah yeah <laughs> i'll so go towards the house. house yeah exactly <laughs> well i don't have it in 4k it's not in 4k on oh, uh, kaleidoscape, cool. kaleidoscape. So, oh, right yeah yeah no. so i have did that's you, what did I have you have to. a quick look at it did you have a chance to see it or no have a quick no check? i was going to but i was like ah, I'm, i i i'd get shawshanked and i didn't have time yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'd be like he's one of those right. <laughs> yeah so it's uh oh. but yeah i was like i i swear i was like oh no so and it actually it took me a couple of days to even remember to go and look and i was like oh. hmm. I, so i'm looking at the alphabetical and i was like are you kidding me <laughs> <laughs> there it now is that I, now that you mention it i think i remember you buying it while i was talking about it isn't this one of those ka moments i might I it might have been, been. been. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> it's it's really hard to uh <laughs> to remember all of them yeah. like that so but yeah oh so there you go God. so we i do i do have a roadhouse in 4k so well, when you get, you get around to it it'll be good to a b it i think you'll be very oh, yeah. pleased with the 4k disc it is oh, it yeah. is significantly better than i'd ever seen it and what i've had it? the blu-ray and everything else so yeah that was great just you know don't show it to anybody from the door podcast because I think they've had enough of the words "roadhouse." Well, um, they love the the <laughs> they love that one, the original mm. one, and that's part of their that's that's the biggest part of their issue is they just they love it so much that they're like, "How can you desecrate such a great movie?" I go, "I don't think it does." <laughs> no, it's like no, you know. So, um, just before I forget, these just whilst you're looking up your next picture, so Greg, the awesome ninja, someone who, oh, yeah. I think you know, um, I know. just asked earlier, and, and I didn't mention it, so I'll um, I'll just say, so says Steve, have you tried hooking up your Lenovo handheld to the theater yet, or is the PlayStation just better? Um, this is referring to I've got a Lenovo Legion Go handheld PC, gaming PC that I bought this week, which I've never owned before, anything like that, um, and yeah. I've been messing around with it. It's great fun. But uh, but to answer the question, Greg, no, I haven't because I don't think it would upscale very well from a you know an eight point eight inch, eight point nine inch screen to a seventy five inch screen. Um, I don't think it'll scale too well, and I think it'll show some of the uh, the issues on an eight point eight inch screen. It looks fantastic, but you zoom it up to that, and I think there'll be potential issues. Um, and the PS five is is better for that size screen, I think. Um, but yeah, but in terms of the the machine itself, love it. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> there we go. Just thought I'd mention that before I forgot. <laughs> there you go. And uh, Jordan say Jordan says he goes DJ. I see that like me, you also own the Australian Blu-ray 3D release of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yes, hmm. yes. I uh, I love 3D movies, especially in in my hmm. theater on the big screen. It's uh, a lot of fun. I haven't done that in a little bit. Uh, I kind of waned a little bit on that, but. Uh, you want to see mm. the, the the shot you mentioned earlier? We'll bring this up. Oh yeah, I think it'll play. Let's see if the sound plays on this. So I'll play it. There you go. So I said this to my son. <laughs> yeah, I can't hear the audio. <laughs> oh, you can't? <laughs> no, no oh, I can't hear it. Yeah, I don't know. I could hear. Yeah. It. All right. So yeah, it's uh whoops, wrong button. Um yeah, it's a ram set for driving nails into concrete. So um just a twenty-two 
22 caliber and you but it's automatic so i sent that to my son and then i i also sent it to you <laughs> I was like, oh yes, yes. which i showed fun. to uh to, to some people today who were like that is cool <laughs> so you heard yeah. it though right you could hear it. yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty yeah, the, good sound it's class yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you get yeah it's like boom yeah because you have i did when i did this theater i did the old like i don't think this existed at the time this ram set i got the cheap one which is like you load the charge in the end you put the nail in and then you strike it with a hammer but you got to hold it with your hand and hit it and if you don't hold the pressure it'll it doesn't drive the nail as much as it drives your hand back right so you're like leaning hitting and then when you try to get into some weird areas it's hard to do or you're trying to put a stud like up against the concrete the foundation mm. up high it just doesn't work so this set here i'm like i bought this a while ago knowing i'd be doing the house and it was like it's like 200 bucks 250 for the set but i'm like i'm not messing around i just wanna... and you put you put the charges in just like it's a clip you put them in they come out the top when they discharge and you're like and I'd never used it, right? So I opened the case up, and this wasn't my first shot that I videoed. But um, <laughs> I, I like the first time I went to do it, I was like, nothing. I'm like, okay, what do you do? I'm like, I don't know what to do. And the instructions are in the case, but <laughs> you're not gonna read that. Yeah, instructions. You just keep yeah. messing around. Just really people you until you shoot a nail <laughs> into your forehead or something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm just like I keep trying and I I don't know if you could see in the video in the picture here it's uh yeah it's hard to see in the picture but I got the Bose earbuds in which are really oh. good noise canceling so no sound on I just had them in and it did a pretty good job of you know drowning out the the shot but uh but yeah i remember i'm like because you the first one you're like oh what kind of kick am i gonna get out of this it was like oh, it's really <laughs> nice because it's it actually is a sound suppressor in it too so I, mm -hmm. after that i didn't even use it but the ear pieces but so nice so much nicer than what i used to use how long did it take you to realize there's no full auto on it <laughs> oh right away that's yeah exactly <laughs> Now we all have fun with that stuff, shooting nail guns. Like you got to hold it because they have the mm. safety. You have to push it in. This one here, you can't. You actually have to push down, and there's no way for you to shoot that out public. You know, Probably but even like a best. regular like nail ga gun, what you <laughs> yeah. see in the movies, we were laughing about it when we were working. We were shooting them, and you could, sh I could shoot you from like five feet away, and it just the nail would just bounce off you. There's, yeah, there's well, not yeah. enough there for you. Again, yeah, probably uh, not like the, the movie. I think Lethal Weapon or something. Two, yeah, Lethal Weapon Two, yeah. isn't it? Would they shoot done? somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, through the, but through that the, it wouldn't work. Plastic. It, yeah, mm. there's not enough. There's not enough weight behind the nail and enough mm. power. Um, now, if you went up to them and used the nail gun on and pushed it into them, that would, it might go out the other side. There's enough pressure there. But well, we've all seen No Country for Old Men. We know how that all works. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I've shot gun myself gun. with a nail gun um well deliberately my law did <laughs> not deliberately Goodbye, cruel no. world <laughs> no uh double shot into my ankle one into the two by four i was framing a i was forming a driveway and i was showing my buddy how to do it and i go here put your foot here you got to hold the stake i go just be careful it doesn't double shot and hit you in the ankle and i go boom and it goes and he go i go say and he looks and he goes like that i didn't even know i did it and the thing was sticking right out of the bone on my ankle <laughs> i was like well, whoops as a result of hurt. the aforementioned rugby injury i've got nails in my kneecap and nails in my ankle and titanium right through the the, the uh the fibula but um but you know not those kind of nails <laughs> yeah no no it was uh didn't even at the time it didn't hurt i just pulled it out and went back to work kept working and as long as i was working i was fine but i had a wedding that night and the drive it was like a 45 minute drive to the wedding and when i got went to get out of the car i couldn't even walk on it so i sat through the church in like excruciating pain and then we hit like a cvs you know drugstore on the way mm. grabbed a bunch of ibuprofen had two or three beers and then i was dancing <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't driving home but i was dancing mm. <laughs> my ankle felt better oh, man ouch so, yes yep. as, uh, as dom says ouch ouch yeah exactly <laughs> yep so, yeah, do you play with the gun like happy gilmore <laughs> we do <laughs> yeah <laughs> nobody's taken one on the head yet yet <laughs> yeah. 
Ouch. All right. Ouch. Ouch. Let's get let's get let's get back to a home theater experience. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I could go on all day with how many times I've hurt myself. <laughs> all right. Now mm. this one surprised me to see in the list. Yes. Didn't we yeah. just do this? Like all three of us on Blu ray and on John. Blu ray. You did oh. it in 4K. Oh, okay. mine was Blu ray. So hence oh. the reason. Oh, yeah. Well, that was that was a good big, big market tease. Let's bring it to the stage. <laughs> oh, there it okay. is. Okay. Yeah. So this is again, apologies for the picture, guys. This is a full moving menu, although it, hence the, the blurry hand thing there. Um, but I at think least it's great. It say the title. Yeah, it says Green Room, which is good, and that is what this is. So this is the new re-release uh, in the UK, first time on 4K Blu-ray disc. Unfortunately, though, we don't get Atmos. We only get DTS HD MA, albeit up mixed in your electric, because, Deej, you've got 4K and Atmos on Kaleidoscape. Yeah. Only. Yeah, so we, I, I was hoping we'd get the Atmos, but we don't. But, you know, it's not the end of the world because um, it's up mixed anyway, and, you know, that's fine. And, yes, yeah. we only did it not that long ago, a few months ago, but it was the Blu-ray that I was talking about, which I had re-watched just on a whim. And at that time, I did not know this was coming out um, in 4K over here on disc. Otherwise, I would have waited. Um, so, yeah, so watching it again, film's still good. Uh, those that, that maybe have tuned into us since we talked about it um should know this is a movie about a um a struggling kind of um punk band they're just young kids basically just kids yeah. who are touring their way around the, the u.s and and siphoning off gas to get them to the next place and and they're a they're just a kind of jobbing punk rock band and little kids and they end up um being stuck in a in an outback kind of um uh punk bar i suppose and they get trapped and they get trapped because they see something they shouldn't and then everything unravels from there and it's got patrick stewart in it um anyway there's a, there's some deep cuts spoilers <laughs> yeah 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 well he is uh, he is in the pictures and he's on the uh, he's on the back of the box i think we're okay maybe just this time but i didn't won't put any pictures up just in case um and uh so yes so it and it all unfolds from there and it's a very 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 well done movie it's very tense it's very graphic there's a lot of gore and blood and guts in this um and it's a really well told and actually i think quite believable story things aren't we've talked about silly mistakes and things that characters do in movies and i think in this this kind of resolves itself in quite an intelligent way you know there aren't any easy outs for characters in this people don't just kind of find a way out things have to be hard fought hard won and characters don't yeah. generally make stupid decisions in this at least i don't think um so i think it's a really intelligent really taught well-made thriller and it's a great film now the 4k is very nice and i remember you talking quite effusively about the kaleidoscape quality and i'm very glad to report that the 4k disc is the same in terms of its video um you, you notice much more funny enough it's called green room there's a green tint from for, for most of the movie yeah and the 4k wider color gamut really brings that out more than i'd noticed before um so there's greens that you've got blue tints as well and it looks great really really detailed those gore effects are more nasty than ever um you know and, and uh, it really does shine the, the, there's a lot of dark um sequences in this because of course once they're in the once all things are going wrong power is cut everything is then in sort of dimly lit hallways and interiors and all that look has been resolved really well in 4k so it looks great and i would not go back to the blu-ray now this is worth the investment for those that like the movie or if you're curious about the film get the 4k disc don't bother about the blu-ray or get it on kaleidoscape if you can um on your 97 terabyte <laughs> hard drive <laughs> i got a 12. Um, 12 well you're on your way you're terabyte. on your way Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. So, yeah. so you know, it, 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 if you're curious about it, this is the version to see. Um, audio is really good as well. I mean, it is up mixed. I think it's the same audio track for us that's on the Blu ray. I didn't notice any obvious changes to it, but that's not to say it's not good. You know, gunshots sound really good. The dogs sound suitably threatening. Um, you know, the, the, the ickiness of the, of the injuries and stuff and all that and the squelchiness of the blood and everything else that's going on is really, really well done. But as I said, we just don't get the extra lossless track. Um, so, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. 
very, very good. And uh, and I recommend this a great deal. And if you want to know more about what we thought about it, then again, there's a show a few months back where we did talk about it um, in more detail. And then you hear more about what John thought of it as well as uh, as well as you did. But yeah, it's great. Really, really good. Yeah, it's it really was. I was skeptical, I guess, mm. going into it because, mm -hmm. you know, you're you I do like horror. Um, mm. But this, like you said, I think it's a. When you were saying it's a smart horror mm. or like smart decisions, I was thinking yes and no, because mm. I think that what they, to say that, I think some people might watch it and go, it's not very smart, but the writing <sighs> is smart, right? Mm. The characters are doing what's true to that type of a character, right? Mm. Especially like a Patrick Stewart's character. He's unbelievable in this. And in, in that kind of character, he's smart, he's calculated, but like, you're just like, what the, you know, like there's people like that in the world, right? And it's oh, yeah. just like every character in this. It's like, there are people like this. You might not think what they're doing is smart, but they do. <laughs> And I think, you know what I mean? Like, I, cause mm. I, there were times I'm watching this going, that was just so stupid, <laughs> but <laughs> I would say, but I've said that to people in real life, <laughs> like that was dumb, <laughs> you know? So, um, but, but yes, I think, it, right. but, but what the film, when it, when, and what I mean by smart, a smart movie, the film doesn't do what Aquaman two does. You don't get oh, those. God, no, <laughs> no, but you don't get those tracking shots where people are walking and they're like, right, right. this is what's going on. This is what we do. The movie, I don't think, ever slows down to pander no. to the audience. They have their conversations, and if you miss it, bad luck. You know, and yeah. they have some quite quite layered conversations. Um, and, and Patrick Stewart is one of the ones who, who's perhaps one of the main culprits of that, who is just going, we're going to do this, we're doing that, we're doing this, and this is why we're doing that, and we're going to sort it out, and you need to do this. At no point do you catch them talking to the audience. Why are we doing this? Well, because we need to – it's just – go 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 and that's what i mean it's a smart script you know it doesn't it doesn't pander to the audience it just it just shows you here is the problem and this is what we're going to do about it and i think yeah. that's very clever um and especially for a kind of what would have been this script i think when it if just reading it on the page would have been a schlocky b movie and yet i think this is much more than that in the hands of jeremy sonnier who's the director He's very, very clever. Anyway, I think in his hands and the way and the actors' hands, the way they deliver the dialogue, it elevates it way beyond your normal schlocky home invasion type genre B movie. You know, they're trying to get in. What do we do? Let's escape. You know, there's much more to this than that, um, and it stands up to multiple viewings as well. It's all kinds of things you miss the first time, second time, third time. This is, I think, was my fourth time seeing it. Um, it's it's oh, wow. really really good. So I I yeah I think this is a great film, um, and uh, and I'd recommend some of the other movies that he's done as well. Blue Ruin's really good as well, um, and you know those kinds of movies are very very well worth seeing. Um, so yeah, recommended those that haven't seen it, definitely give it a go. And I would say go with the four K. Um, yeah. Looks as though uh, yeah, we just said there's some love for it in the chat. So yeah, Dom says loved it. Um, which is really good. I know Jordan did as well. Um, and yes, I think um, Dom says this is a second site release. And uh, Dom says he's anxiously waiting for their Hitcher oh. 4K release. Yeah, sometime this year, apparently. So we're that, all waiting for that. That'll be great. That's one of my favorite, all-time all favorite movies. Rutka Hauer. <sighs> yeah. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. That yeah, to see Thomas Howland, it's amazing as well. I mean, to, everyone's yeah, bringing just, their A game in that. It's like, it's like Hitchcockian that movie mm. it's just so the like isn't it like well it's like dual jaws just the tension mm -hmm. throughout that i i can't wait for that yeah yeah and uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so good. Kahara was amazing yeah it'll be great as to see it again and they've and they've been guy. this has been coming for about two years they've been working oh, yeah? on the 4k release and working on every now and Ooh. then second site tweet out a still image and and say look it's coming we are doing this this is what we're sorting now and they are really really kind of um pushing this so this should be an exceptional release when it comes out but yeah that's a day one for me no doubt about it oh yeah oh man no, nope, that's not the right one. Kaleidoscape hat doesn't even have it. Um, the the hitcher. 
they have the one from 2007. No, oh, yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't do no. that to yourself. <laughs> I, I, I did can't. see it. I think I've seen that. It's dreadful. And not a, yeah. not even a patch on the original. No. Nope. No, they have they they just have the they have hit mm. they have the hitcher from 2007 and they have the hitcher 2 from 2003. So mm. they probably, you know, hopefully they'll get it. If not, I'm Well, they might do nearer the, the disc, yeah, nearer the sure. time. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's ever yeah. come out on Blu-ray, has it? If or if it has, I've not seen or heard of it. I don't Otherwise, own it. I've, that's for sure. Yeah, quite. Yeah, yeah. indeed. I, I had the. I think I had the DVD. I think I certainly had the VHS. Um, yeah, I pretty much wore that out. Um, yeah, that's a great movie. And talk about a nihilistic kind of film where just anything goes, and you can't predict what's going to happen in that film. That is uh, that is one of them. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Um, my next update um we are moving right along here uh what you saw before was the um doo -doo -doo -doo. we'll pull these up here so when you saw me nailing into the into the floor that was over here this is my gym uh framed this out uh started framing the basement finished the upstairs there wasn't really anything to take pictures of upstairs. It was just, I had to finish some walls. I had to do some door jams and certain things like that. Um, but got the entire upstairs finished. Um, and that, that great. And then now I am, everything is downstairs. All I have to do is the downstairs. So the basement and on the other side of this door right here is my parents' side. So that's, I'm not sure if I have to frame that out for the insulation guy or not, or if he just sprays the walls regardless. I'll probably frame it anyways. But I figured I'd start at this door here, work my way around. And then now you can see, now this right here, this is the bathroom, the downstairs bathroom. I'll fit, this wall will continue a little bit over this way. You go through this door here into the gym and the gym's 22 feet long but 10 feet wide and nine feet tall um so that's where we are right now and uh i will be and this isn't the big news i'm saving that for after steve's next movie but uh after i get around this corner i need to go like i to wrap the basement framing i i'm hoping fingers crossed the theater might be framed by this weekend it might mm. be framed out because i have to go around that wall and because of the way i've designed it and for the separation everything has to take place so if i get called away to another part of the house by somebody else because i got hvac coming in on thursday uh my brother-in-law is coming tomorrow you can see down here in this picture that our windows are in so he's coming tomorrow to show me how to put windows in. Uh, we're going to do a couple and then I'll do the rest. So we'll see it, but it's supposed to be pouring rain. So you got to be inside and outside to do them. So we're going to do the farmer's porch area, but, but anyways, in the rain, I can't work work. So I'm hoping to be able to finish framing the entire basement. And, uh, as as you do these things like if you see this picture right if you're looking at this picture right here you see this that's a backer so i mm -hmm. know that's going to be a wall so that's where the wall comes out for the bathroom here and that that's how you frame these things you plan it as you go ahead and the way i'm doing the theater i don't have blueprints so i have to do everything off you know like okay i want this to be here and i'm gonna plan out that wall accordingly but because it's all separate from the house not touching anything so no you get no you know reverberations through the house i can't just put up a freestanding wall i have to do all of them because they're all going to hold each other up and then frame i'm not going to frame every joist across the top for the time being because they're going to be running ductwork and insulation afterwards so i'll do just a few and then pop them in after the fact um but but yeah get the whole thing framed out and done by this weekend so very mm -hmm. excited so that should be fun to have some pictures for and um maybe maybe another update as well uh next week mm -hmm. so. looking good looking good yeah <laughs> very a lot of fun what what did todd say to me this morning he's like 
he goes, it's, he goes, it's so great that you have that skill or something like that. I was like, don't use that term. <laughs> use, use the term <laughs> skill loosely. Um, cause I've I, like, I was saying to my brother-in-law over the weekend, we got, we got the family got together for Easter and I said, man, it's so much more relaxing when you're not there because he's the professional, he's the expert, right? So when I do something, if I make a mistake and he's there, you're just like, oh my God, I hope he doesn't see me. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> right. And then, so I said, I go, it's so nice. Cause now I can make the mistakes and all I got to do is just go, ah, screw it. And you, you just fix it right? You just fix the mistake. And he goes, I do that all the time. I was, I was telling him I had a problem on one wall and I'm trying to problem solve, trying to get around the piping and everything. And he goes, I, I stared at it for like an hour and a half trying to figure out how to solve this. And finally Joe was there. My son was there. I was like, that's it. I got to go home for a second. Went home, grabbed two energy drinks. Cause I still had like eight hours to go Two energy drinks, pet the dogs, blah, blah, blah. I went back to the house walked in the door, looked at the wall, solved it like that. I texted yeah. my son. I go 20 seconds in the room and I figured out how to fix it. Right. Solved the issue. Eight hours later, whatever it was, energy drinks never got opened. I just boom, bop, 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 and just start working. Just keep on going. So, and I told my brother-in-law that, and he's like, I do that all the time. He goes, you lay in bed going, how do I get this to line up? How can I, and you try and problem solve. And I'm like, uh, so, but yeah, there we go. But how, how often does that happen in your home theater as well? Cause that's happened to yeah. me many times over the years that, you know, something goes wrong and you're just thinking, I cannot for the life of me work this out. What the hell? And you go yeah. to bed and you wake up the next morning or in the middle of the night, bang. Oh, I haven't tried that. And sure enough, that's the thing. Yeah. The, the disengaging from it. The, yeah. You kind of get out of your own way as it were think yes. about something else and suddenly your brain is still working on it. It would seem, and then kind of comes back to you with the answer. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it happens it's to me quite a bit. It ha Oh my God. And it, it's, it's that stubbornness. Like I can solve this. And if you just mm -hmm. step away for a second and like, just relax, calm down, come back to it with fresh eyes and mm -hmm. bang. It's like, if I told you what the problem was, you'd be like, what the hell? It just seemed like such in, and what's funny is if anybody walked in the room and I'm like, I can't figure this out. They'd go do that. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, like I said, it's getting out of your own way. Yeah. yeah trying to not, yeah. trying to not see the wood for the trees, you know, and you yeah. then kind of realize that you've, uh, you, you know, you've actually taken yourself out of it. But yeah, no, that happens to me a lot. <laughs> that was my you early know? days of home theater. Like when I was still living at my parents' house in the basement and I was trying to, there was no home theater. It was like, how can I get this to work? And I'd be laying in bed going, if I, why split this one and I put it into this one and like three in the morning, get up, turn the lights on, wire some stuff behind my system, try it out at a low volume. Be like it worked, yeah. but you like, it's, it's all that problem solving. And I really, really do enjoy that stuff as stressful mm -hmm. as it is. I do enjoy it because that. Because at the end of the day, you, you've, you've solved most of them and now and you have something, whether it's your theater, your house, your wall, your gym wall, whatever it is, right? You figured <laughs> it out. So, hey, but all right. Well as, well, as far as I'm concerned, Deej, even if you don't want to think of it as a skill, it is absolutely a skill for you to be able to do this stuff. I'm with Todd on this because hey. there's someone who, you know, needs a diagram to put a light bulb in. Um, I think you're, uh, you know, you're, you're doing this is an incredible skill. So I'm with it's more that. of a stubbornness, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it works you know. and it does. Yeah, you know, and exactly. I, look, I thought I was being incredibly clever setting up a little PC thing on Sunday afternoon. I thought, wow, look at me. I have peaked. So, you know, building a house, <laughs> Deej, is just a different world. <laughs> it really, it, it, yeah, it really isn't. It's pretty simple. It's a lot of steps, but you just do each one. And that's, that's the speech I got from Robbie on Saturday or something. It was like, just keep at something and just keep going. Stop. He, like, I bounce around. But at the yeah, same time, yeah, yeah. like I just said to you earlier, if I don't get pulled away, but I have to bounce because not only am I just, am I framing right now, I am the framer now. But somebody might ask me, like, all right, the plumber might need me to do something, or the HVAC guy needs me. So you have to go take care of that, mm. you know? And it's, and in the, so it's, it, it's a little different in that way.
But I do get what he means, and it was nice to get the upstairs done and now be working my way around the basement and make, you know, keep focus and stuff. But, but yeah, it's, it's stubbornness and where there's a will, there's a way, right? I can't yeah. afford to pay somebody to do it. So I gotta, <laughs> I gotta figure it out. <laughs> There so, you go. So uh, Paul yeah, saying, we yeah. were saying we were saying last week about uh, necessity as the mother of invention, and that's yeah. clearly what uh, what we got there. Anyway, so Paul says so true. He said I have a horrible story about an unsolvable technical issue on a recording job, which I solved in the van on the way home. <laughs> right. I think I think Paul, you told me that one. I think you told me that one <laughs> once or something because you were like you, it was such oh my god. But yeah, that's the way it is. It's just all of a sudden it clicks, and you're like. And it's nine times out of 10, it's an easy solution. It's just, you were missing it because you were complicating it with your, with overthinking. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the, there is definitely, it shows how little we understand our own brains, let alone the human yes. brain generally, that there are parts of the brain that continue working when the rest of you is moved on to something else, you know, you're, but that part is still there and it's still ticking over and working the problem um, yeah. and then presents it to you when it's, when it's done. Which is incredible, yeah. isn't it? I mean, I, you know, there's probably a, a psychological term for it, but you know, I, I don't know it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it'll come to me later. Um, there but there go. is definitely a part of you that that is that is always working on it. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Aren't we clever? <laughs> yep, that's that's what I used to say in high school. I didn't have the answers at the time of the test, but I sure I get them later. <laughs> Can I get back to you? <laughs> yeah. Can I get back to you on this one? <laughs> All right. I am super interested in this one. This is your last Ooh. one, right, Steve? Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't seen this one in years, but it is epic. Is Prepare to have your way. appetite whetted. Get your finger over the ka button, Deej. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So this, again, sorry, guys. It doesn't say the name of the movie on the image for weird reasons because this is not a full motion video menu. This is the 1996 instant oh. classic Primal Fear. Oh, um, my God. Starring Richard Gere, um, Laura Linney, and, of course, Ed Norton. And, frankly, a whole star. Of, it's a whole star cast or an all-star cast. Um, but, yeah, so Primal Fear, the story of the courageous criminal defense attorney <laughs> who is not going to oh. take things lying down and is going to fight for his client tooth and nail. Um, albeit, can I say, <laughs> in, a, in a way that we would not do that over here. All right. So I, I am not um, in any way endorsing <laughs> the approach of Richard Gere's defense attorney oh. in this movie because you'd get disbarred and you'd probably get sent to prison if you did that in the UK. This is not what criminal defense lawyers in the UK do. Let me just make that perfectly clear. <laughs> but I can watch this film and I can enjoy this film. Oh, yeah. Night, Dom. By, uh, Dom's uh, heading off. He's uh, having oh. a late one. Yeah. So bye, Dom. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Thanks, um, buddy. Yeah, I think we'll send him to sleep with talking of primal fear and defense lawyers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I can watch this film and I can enjoy this because normally I can't. I can't watch any British legal thriller, legal series, legal drama, whatever you call it. I can't watch them because I get incredibly frustrated very quickly with all of the right. procedural issues and straight up nonsense that these things come up with. And they all do it, no matter how good their technical advisors might be. If it's British, it's wrong and it drives me crazy. So... <laughs> I can enjoy these, and I put this sort of film up with things like A Few Good Men and, you know, 12 Angry yeah. Men and things like that where I can watch it, disengage the brain because I don't have to – I can just think, well, it's it's someone else. It's a different country. Let them do what they do. Um, yeah. And so I can enjoy this, and I do really like this film. Now, interestingly, it's very poorly reviewed. On, really? on IMDb, yeah, it's like like um, forty something out of a hundred on IMDb, like, and there are some reviews on there oh. saying this is dreadful, borderline unwatchable. One of them said, "I'm and looking on, at and, Rotten Tomatoes has seventy seven percent tomato score, and then the box mm, of popcorn is eighty nine percent." You look on I so IMDb because I looked it up because um, I was curious about it. Let me just try and remind myself because I don't want to get it wrong was let me have a look i was because i was really surprised uh where was it i only looked it up last night uh right talk amongst yourselves as we yeah. say 
um, so, hold music. Your call is important to well, us. Well, while you're while you're looking that there up, you go, 47, me, uh, 47. There it is. Oh my god. Yeah, and it, and it, not good. <laughs> no. So it's, yeah. So it's um yeah it's pretty pretty low. So I think this is great. Mm. I've always enjoyed this film. Mm. I and I'm gonna not talk at all about the film movie. Yeah, the movie. Yeah, the movie because itself. We'll, we'll get letters. So good. Yes, we will <laughs> get it's, many. It is yeah, so we good. Will. It's a great film. It's a good courtroom drama. The performances are all very, very good, and it's a movie that is unforgettable. And and we'll leave it at that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and it still holds up. And even and I've seen this film loads of times, and I've recommended ah. it to lots of people. And as soon as they've seen it, they're on the phone to you, or they're going, "We need yeah. to talk." <laughs> yeah exactly every exactly. time every time without fail yeah. um Guess and so if you've never you, seen it <clears throat> exactly that so if you if anyone's listening to this or watching this and you're thinking what's this you know go do yourselves a favor however you see it and i'm going to tell you in a minute that you need to see this version but however you see it um do yourself a favor and see it and then immediately start a conversation with someone about it because they will have seen it or will want to see it and will be looking forward to it. Um, but oh. yeah, so it's still great and it still holds up. And, you know, and I've watched this with someone else um, Sunday night, Monday night. And uh, yeah, last night, I think it was. And we both had a really good time with it. And at the end again, oh, it's so good. It hasn't aged today. So film, oh. excellent still. It hasn't changed, hasn't aged. It's still great. It is a little sad. Um, Andre uh, Bowers in it, um, who I'd forgotten was in it, of course, who passed only a couple of months or so ago. Um, so, you know, there, there are, in fact, there's a number of people in here that have since passed. Um, but it's, you know, very, very good. Now, video-wise, because this is the 4K disc, it's in uh, 4K UHD, it's just come out here, um, and in DTS HD 5.1 Master Audio, mm -hmm. uh, mixed to Neural X. Um, video-wise, it's really nice. It's in 185, so fills the screen nicely. Um, colors are great. Image quality, very detailed. There is grain, but it's really well taken care of. It's not Karate Kid. It's not, you know, it's not obtrusive. Um, it's been really well worked on. It's a Paramount release. So, of course, they do decent, solid catalog remasters. It's not earth shattering, but it's really good, and it's better than it's looked before. And and it, throughout the movie, Gears got very pricey suits on and you can see every stitch and weave um the shirts that he wears the bright you know the white pristine shirts look you know glowing basically um everything looks great there's no issues with that at all but as i often say Deej, no matter how good it might look the audio on this this is a home theater experience Deej, really courtroom drama now oh. only in particular one sequence but what a sequence. So towards the beginning, when Ed Norton is being pursued by the police, it, there is that whole sequence is like a modern home theater movie. You've got helicopters which circle the room in the ceiling. So you've got, and it goes round and round and round, and you can pinpoint where the helicopter is without being able to see it. It's really nice. And then as part of this pursuit, he goes over a, a railway line. And so you've then got the, the train cars coming across the room, across the back of the room, over the top, because he's then underneath a railway. Thing. And it is like, wow. And the person I saw it with, again, who's not normally bothered about this kind of thing, was like, that was amazing. And so it's it's really good. It, it is only really that main sequence, but it's home theater demo stuff. You got to just check this out for a film from 1996. It's really good. So I I was very very pleased with that. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's really really good. Oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, we lost the uh, screen there. What okay, happened here, kids. But yeah, it's, <laughs> so it's it's really good, and that particular sequence is enough to drive the the whole movie. You know, it looks and sounds great. So I I definitely recommend this, and I think it's relatively cheap. I don't think it's you know mega bucks. It's about twenty five pounds here, which is a little more than Paramount normally charge. They're normally nineteen ninety nine here, um, but 
it's well worth it for a really good movie that stands the test of time and actually has a home theater experience within it. Um, and I'm sure anyone that's got it that has watched it will know what that scene is. It's very, very good. So, yeah, well recommended. Very pleased with well, this disc. There we go. So <laughs> we are. Uh, uh, let's see. Here we go. All right. Boom. How hey, are we doing? Good man. Good man. Is it 4K? 4K. Oh, uh, HDR. Nice. HDR. Five point. Yep. And we got uh, DTS HD Master Audio 5.1. So there we go. Hey, well yeah. done, well done, well done. And there we you, go. I think you'd be completing you get around to watching it. 4K HDR. Not so mm. bad. Yeah, I've never seen that poster image before. That's an unusual one. Yeah, That's isn't a, that yeah, pretty cool? Seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not sure why the defense attorney would have his picture on a on, a, on an evidence board, but fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is it's kind of unusual yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why, exactly. why is the defense attorney on the evidence board exactly um but there yeah. we go yeah very very good i i think this film's great and um and i was very very pleased with it so yeah i'll be curious to see what you make of it when you get around to it deej <laughs> oh yeah it's it's another one that goes in the collection that i'll be like oh whoops okay so <laughs> uh i actually i haven't watched a full movie in a little while now mm. and let me see if i'll show you what i've bought recently we can go to my movies here godzilla oh ten commandments mm. i put back on the passion of the christ i bought over the weekend easter yeah uh, it's good yeah roadhouse yeah. i got the commuter uh the menu, nice. menu? madam yeah. webb put watchmen back on the other day never got to it contagion these are all movies i just i haven't watched i just keep, I keep buying madam them. webb was your last one wasn't it did watch that yes mm. i did watch that um i ne see i got raid raid 2 uh, annihilation oblivion those were there but i haven't even seen yellowstone master and commander i watched the opening too um mm, it's great yeah muppets movie the, um, i was talking with somebody on the takeover tuesday i bought all three muppet movies they're there yeah uh, okay. the, the great muppet caper is my yep. absolute favorite of the Muppet movies. I absolutely yep. love that. I That's quote it. that movie most weeks, if not most days. Uh, I love that film. And one yeah. of my favorite lines in that is definitely the checking into the to the motel, and it goes, how can we pay? It goes, three options. A, cash, B, charge, or C, sneak out in the middle of the night. And it goes, I'll take option C. And it goes, very popular choice. <laughs> I love that. It's that is so brilliant. Good. And the and whenever someone says, and of course I hear it a lot in my line of work, someone goes, "We caught that person red-handed," and every time I can't help myself, hand goes up, and they're like, "What are you doing?" I go, "What color are his hands now?" <laughs> it's so stupid. I love it. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, those movies anyway. are just—they're so good. I remember seeing them in the theater as a kid. You know, it was a mm -hmm. rainy Saturday or whatever. My mom would take us. And just, oh my god, so good. <laughs> <laughs> all right um that's it for you right mm, yeah that's me done yep all that's right. my experience is so, complete so here we go so uh my neighbor i went to my neighbor's house um and i asked if i could borrow some power some electricity so i ran an extension cord to the house so i'd have full-time power and uh all but just to run like a light or i added the ring system so mm. I have security. So I got the construction, which I saw at Cedia. They demoed it for me there. And uh, it comes, you know, it's $4.99. It comes with like $600 worth of stuff. So it's not a bad, bad deal. And everything sets up if you're looking at the image here. And it's like you just plug it in and it can run on cellular. So you get a cellular hookup to it. And um, it comes as the package. And you get three gigabytes a month of download if you're using but it it's also uses the what is it the eerie i think it's is it eero e-e-r-o is like mm. the the mesh system so it's incorporated with okay. it okay so mm. it that's how it talks to the cameras and that's how, so you're basically getting going on your your whole home internet system here and now when when i get to the property my house my phone goes right to that wi-fi okay so set it up 
lot of fun. I put the cameras up front and I got some mounts. I still haven't gotten those yet, but I've got four cameras all on all four corners. Uh, and it's fun to watch. I, I go to my phone. Um, I know uh, Meg and Greg have the ring system at their house and they've, you know, their house is finished. So they have a nicer system. Mine's kind of like wonky all over the place. But <laughs> I did notice going through that, you know, in the first day, you get three gigabytes a month. In the first day, I'd use half a gigabyte. I'm like, oh, oh what the hell? That's, that's mm. not going to last. I'm like, what can I do? So I I pulled the trigger. Starlink. Mm. Do you know what Starlink is? Yeah, it's Elon Musk's uh, yeah. Yeah, satellite uh, internet, yep. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't sure it was going to be here in time. It showed up last night. First thing this morning, got to the house, set it up, and I didn't even I didn't even take pictures. But I I literally it's this little this thing here you lay on. I've got it laying on my deck, and it tells you it took me twenty minutes to set this thing up, and a hundred and eighty seven megabytes a second. That's mm -hmm. off of that's off of the Starlink speed test. I did a regular speed test. I was up to two eleven with with uploads of 31 my house gets about 30 to 30 30 to 40 off of my mm -hmm. off because we have crappy i got a gig download but my upload here is slow 31 upload 211 um it's normal i paid thick i think it was 650 and then with tax or whatever for the kit and they have a special right now it's like or it's 90 bucks a month Normally it's 120 a month to run it. Mm. And at these speeds, most people, this is all they would need. And yeah. I don't I don't know what its reliability is. I'm gonna be working on that, but I have very good internet at the house already. Mm. And you know, obviously you couldn't run a you well, you could, you couldn't run a Kaleidoscape, get all the features with this because you okay. need a gig internet right but i could still i could run one it'd just be slow um your yeah. downloads would be slower but at this speed it's like this is more than enough for most people so um, does it does it um is there any data limits on it or is it just nope. as usual it's just completely nope. open and the free. standard okay. package is open no data limit no anything and it's like i'm expecting 120 a month right now i'm paying 90 i don't know if, how long that's going to last mm. um but as soon as i connected it they were like okay the, your your first 30 days you have 30 days to try it out send it back and you get your money back and the you know everything the 90 bucks and that they charged me today and it they, they use you use your phone to find the, the signal and everything you put it. I can't tell you how easy this was to get internet. It's insane. It was, I was like, holy crap. And I wasn't expecting those speeds either at a hundred. I was expecting like a hundred and where I'm in the woods and I don't have like a great view of the horizon or anything. I could see the sky trees are cleared, but I was like, maybe if, if I got 50, I'd be like, okay. Cause it's a backup. And what I'm super excited about is this is like the ultimate in redundancy right mm. like you lose power and you lose the internet to your internet provider that's off the street what do you do you can't have anything but now you have this and if i want to keep it i can but it has no commitments so you can drop it and then if you get hit with a storm and need it you just sign back up and it just goes back up and runs oh wow you know so i'm like I'll, I, you know, obviously I'm going to keep it until I get the full internet at the house, but, and then even once I get the full internet at the house, I'll just be like, hmm. but I have like redundancy after redundancy because right now on my ring system, I already have the, the cellular link mm -hmm. and I have like a half a gigabyte left, but next month I'll get another three. So like, if this goes down, that'll back up my, my ring system, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, eventually when you get the house up and running and you get internet from the street, I'll have triple redundancy because I, I could at least, you know, everything would work all the way back. And, and I don't think, I mean, 90, 120 a month is expensive, but I pay more than that for internet now anyways. 
Really? And, oh yeah, yeah. The wow, gig that's, here that is paying, expensive. Yeah, and yeah. the gig here, a gig connection here, I think is one hundred and four. I think I'm paying one hundred and forty, and then you just for the internet, not for any like yeah. TV or. Nope. Wow, that nope. is a lot. Yeah, we don't pay anything like that. I mean, we. I mean, I've yeah. got here only about a. 130 odd gig down and only about 30 odd up i mean you know i don't yeah we don't have anything too crazy here um but for a gigabyte would be about 60 pounds a month something like that and we oh, really? have been about 25 yeah, yeah for that so uh yeah that, that does seem a lot <laughs> but only in yeah. comparison i mean normally we're used to in the uk getting absolutely you know screwed with anything yeah. technological but actually that that is cheaper here than there um yeah but I, i've got no cause for that kind of you know, I just don't need speed. it. Even when I'm working here, I just don't need that speed. Yeah, because we're not we're not moving big files around, and, and right. also I don't have a Kaleidoscape. So if I got one, I think I would have to bump it. But at the moment, you know, yeah. the speeds we've got are fine. Um, but yeah, no, interesting. Oh, Paul's asking: uh, Does the uh, Starlink antenna need to be aimed or find itself a satellite wherever it's pointing? It finds it wherever it's pointing, doesn't it? Well, y- yes and no. You it does need mm-hmm. to be aimed, but it's super simple like you Mm -hmm. you point your you point your phone at the sky the camera and it'll show and it scans the entire sky then it gives you yeah it it, and you'll see where it sees the satellites these green dots are on the on the screen right Mm -hmm. so then it tells you gives you a ballpark on where to set it down and it i just bought i didn't get like i don't have a stand or anything it just has a fold out piece so you just set it on the deck and i let it sit there and then it goes okay now it's it's uploading and and it wants some adjustments okay and it literally puts a square in a compass and tells and now as you turn it real time you're looking at your phone you turn it and it's like you're good boom Hmm. and then right after that i went to the 187 megabytes a second it's that Hmm. fast so like people use them for camping and stuff you take it camping Hmm. it just needs to have power so you got to run a generator or something but um but yeah it's like boats camera you know camping um they have i think it's like twenty five hundred dollars for the set but it's it's like a super high speed one so like if you wanted to run a business off it or something but um but at 180 like i could run this house if it wasn't for the kaleidoscape and multiple people running multiple tvs because my parents will have a tv going everything will be you know it that's the drain on your internet if you have enough things going at once Mm. but I just like the idea that if you lose power and you lose everything, like when we lost power for like a week here, everybody in the neighborhood lost their television. Mm-hmm. You know, even and even if you had a generator, you had no internet, you had no anything coming in from the cable company. Um, I had Dish TV at the time, so I had TVs and a generator, so that worked. But ever since I cut the cord, everything's just been, I'm like, how do I solve this problem? And I've been looking at this for a while, but I didn't want to get it here. And uh, and then I was just like, "Hey, wait a minute! I what can I? I actually looked into boosting. My first problem solution, problem solving idea was to boost the cellular signal because it wasn't very good either. And I was mm-hmm. like, "Wait a minute! What about that star? I looked it up and I was like, "Oh man, I gotta do it! Bang!" And uh, I love it, love it, and I love the redundancy for the theater and everything too. So that you, you'll always be able to stream regardless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's interesting. So, so yeah, so you just need the power so that it can draw its signal from the from the satellite. Yep. Oh, that's yep. interesting. Yeah. That's it. Hmm. That's it. So it makes you. Uh, I mean, you're really kind of off the grid in a way, right? You don't need a wired hmm. connection to the internet, and you're getting a good good speeds. So, so yeah. So that was, I'm, I'm really excited for that. Cause I love, mm. I love being self-reliant and not having yeah. it to be like, you know, like have a generator, have it power goes down and be able to like still run my house as usual. It's pretty cool. It, the so, flexibility is cool of it. I think I've seen, I think I saw adverts on, on Twitter about it. And I remember thinking that does look quite cool, but then the expense was like, well, I just don't need it. You know, if, cause if, right. if it goes down here, we do still get cellular signal i mean we've got a fairly decent well where we are at the moment right right here the cellular signal is fine and on a number of occasions we've had power cuts it's like okay we'll just go to 5g it's fine 
and we've got yeah. you know, hundreds of gigs worth of 5G every month for free that we never use. And so it's like, because everything's Wi-Fi. So it's like, oh, okay, fine. You know, we just switch to that for a couple of days. There wouldn't be an issue. Um, and you just tether everything to a phone and away you go. Um, yeah. But I have looked at it though and thought that does look quite cool. Mm. It is. <laughs> and it, <clears throat> the way it's working out, especially at the 30-day trial, the way it's yeah. working out, it's like, I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see how reliable, like, does it drop out during storms? Does it drop out at certain times? Like, you know, like things tend to do, um, satellite things can, can do that at times. So yeah. I don't know how reliable it is a hundred percent of the time. Um, but I mean, we all have internet issues everywhere, right? R whether it's mm -hmm. your modem in your house or the street, you never know what it is. There's so many variables. So, but this is just an added feature that you can, hey, if your internet's crappy, if nothing else, it allows you to be like, I hate my internet company. Boom, try this. <laughs> it's like, you know, mm. and uh, like Paul says, in the, Paul said in the chat, he's like, incredible that Starlink works out cheaper than a hard line. It, it is, but it isn't. You can't get the speeds that I can get with the hard line for, a, for relatively, you know, a little bit more money. I'm getting a gig for like 20 bucks more a month. But, but to be able to get a good internet connection and for people that have no internet, like, you know, I, I had, uh, the guy on the show and he was like, I had no internet for years and years at his house. They didn't have it yet. So, I mean, and this is everywhere well, this should in the country. You can get it. Yeah. Well, anywhere in the world, anywhere. Presume as long as you can see the sky, presumably you can get, well, the, you, know, the, you gotta the, go on their map. There's, there's, there's certain countries that are blocked out. He's not allowing them to well, have I, it. I, which, which are countries I'm not sure you'd want to be in anyway, um, if right. you could avoid it. So yeah. I think if you find yourself in one of those countries, the internet's the least of your worries. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, exactly. I'm getting shot at, but check out hey. my Kaleidoscape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I tell you what, oh. those bullet sounds, they're so realistic. Oh, it's not oh. the Kaleidoscape. Oh, I see. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> all right all right uh, there we go we gotta get going i know you gotta get to bed mm. i gotta get back to, back to back to work but that's okay so that was great <laughs> thank you everybody mm. in the chat uh all patreon supporters all the supporters out there thank you very much um john and i have been trying to hook up for another conversation and <laughs> it's like we're both busy <laughs> but john john last i heard john is doing fairly well had a good Easter. Yeah, he's had some good. Uh, he's had some good news this week, hasn't he? So he's, um, hmm. yeah, he's he's very happy, and he has seen the raid and said it did oh. not disappoint. Yes. Nice. So he has seen. Yes. It. Yeah, yeah. He, he we were texting at the weekend, and uh, yeah, he enjoyed it. Uh, did you see uh, Davy Ryan Davy of uh, hashtag Dork commented on the rave, uh, the raid the other day? Oh, did he on Twitter? Oh, yeah. He was like, oh. it had nothing to do with us, but he was just, mm. he was just commenting on it. I thought it was funny because I follow him on Twitter and he was like, he goes, if you, if you liked, uh, dread, you'll love this. Definitely must see blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Hey, there you go. Smart guy. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. but, uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Right. We're good. Yeah. We're yeah, yeah. Yep. And those for next week, as I said, started hopefully... on time, ending kind of on time. Yep. So, yep, yep. Some fun yep, stuff coming so... up next week yeah camera and arama that's the plan next week fingers crossed yeah <laughs> that's right all right thank you everybody thanks for watching listening participating all that fun stuff uh what are you gonna do go push play what he said <laughs>